If you have a look here at our James Cook University campus, you can see obviously that we have a number of different features there that I'm getting ready to digitize. So I have already started to look at some of the blue, green and gray infrastructure and I've digitized some buildings, car parks, trees and walkways. But what I haven't touched on just yet are the roads. Now the roads actually form part of that gray infrastructure but I wanna have a look at a way that we can digitize the roads in a really time efficient manner. So roads could be seen as either polygon or line features, but at this scale, because they're taking up space, I guess you could say, we would like to really consider them as being polygon features. But polygons can be more challenging to digitize than lines. And we also know that most of our roads are pretty much the same width. So I'm going to go with a bit of a cheat here and I've created myself a new feature class. So this is a line based feature class. You can see this over here on the table of contents. There's nothing in it at the moment, but, I want, but what I'm going to do is to go ahead and digitize each of my roads in as line features. And then we're going to use the buffer tool to change those into polygons and we can then bring those into our infrastructure feature class as a polygon feature that's part of the great infrastructure. So I'm going to go ahead and start to digitize some of these line features in now. So I'll just go to create and under the roads one here I'm going to use this line tool. Now when I go to digitize my lines, I'm also going to make sure that I use the snapping feature. So if we have a look at snapping up here, we can see that snapping is turned on. Basically what this means is that when we have two roads that abut each other, that ArcGIS Pro is automatically going to connect the two of them. So we're not going to have a gap or overshoot between our different features. So as an example, I'll just show you what this looks like here. So say if I go along and digitize this particular road, and so this is the ring road around the JCU campus here that I'm going to create just as I click along each of these points, and it's just going to go off screen now. But say we create that feature, I double click that to finish it. Now, if I want to create another road that's going to connect directly to this one that I've already created, you can see that as my mouse goes close to it, it automatically wants to join that, which is fabulous. And that's exactly what I want it to do because I don't, I don't want to have a little gap between my two roads because that's not the way roads exist anyway. So this is important to turn snapping on to be able to do that. So you can see snapping is on. If I just press that button there, it will turn it off. And if I'm, if I'm turned off, you'll see that it doesn't attempt to connect my two roads at all. So just revising there, we just want to make sure that that is switched on. Now, if you're finding that things are snapping to, to things that you don't want them snapping to, so it's, it's, it's a little bit too sensitive, you can change the settings there as well. So at the moment, it's got a tolerance of about 10 pixels here, which means that it's going to snap to something that's within 10 pixels of where you're digitizing there. And I'm happy with that for the moment, but if you find it's, it's not snapping enough, then you can increase that, or if it's snapping too much, you decrease. It's just sort of a matter of personal preference and the scale at which you're working. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to, to digitize those lines and we'll come back in a moment. I finished digitizing the midline of all the roads on the JCU campus. Now what I'm going to do is to zoom in a little bit closer and see how well that midline ac actually represents the road itself. Because as we know, when we're zoomed all the way in, the road essentially becomes a polygon. So let's zoom in and have a look. Now if we head over to the map tab, we can use the measuring tool to estimate the width of the road. So let's, let's turn off the roads feature for the moment so we don't have any snapping issues and calculate in a few different locations how wide the road is. So I'm just double clicking to stop that calculation there. And as we do this, we'll, we'll see the different values pop up. So it looks like the average road width 
is around about five meters or so. That one's a little bit wider, but that's okay. So I'm quite happy with that for the purpose of what we're doing today. And obviously, if you really need to be 100% precise and accurate, then this isn't a good way of going about it. But this is going to give us a rough idea and probably still within the, the realm of error of manually digitizing this as well. So what I'm now going to do is to use that line feature to create a buffer around it. And that's going to convert it to a polygon feature. So let's zoom out, zoom back out again. And a really quick way of doing this, if you go over to the table of contents, is to right click on the roads feature and go zoom to layer. So that's going to go zoom to the full extent of the area that we've digitized there. So next we're going to go up to the analysis tab and into the tools. So this is a really cool area where there's got where there are a lot of different geoprocessing tools that we can use to help us analyze our data. And now you've got a search bar up here, but you can see that I've already used the buffer tool before, so it automatically comes up in my favorites. But you can, if yours doesn't come up there, you can simply type buffer in this search bar here, and it will pop up there for you. Out of interest, you can also look at all of the toolboxes boxes that there are and the different tools that exist within those as well. So it's often a good little exercise just to see the variety of different operations that you can conduct. But let's go with the buffer tool here because it's already ready for us. And I'm going to double click on that. Now my import features are the roads. So let's tap those in there. And my output feature class is the roads buffer. And I'm quite happy with that default name. And I'm just double checking by hovering over it that it is being put in the right geo database where I want it to be so that I know that I can find it later. Now the key thing is the distance that you want that buffer to be created. So when I estimated the road width, I looked and it was roughly about five meters, which means that's two and a half meters either side of the line that we've already created. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in 2.5 there, and I'm going to make sure that it recognizes that as meters. Now, for most of the other things, I'm just going to accept the defaults here. And you can always get more information on each of those if you're interested by, by going to the little I button on each of those. The only thing that I am going to change is where it says dissolve type, I'm actually going to dissolve everything that it outputs. Now, the difference here being is that if you select no dissolve, you're going to end up with lots of different polygons. Whereas all I want to do is just have one single polygon that's going to represent all of my roads. So the dissolve is going to dissolve any overlapping boundaries that I have between those features there. So let's go ahead and run that and check our output. So it's going to do that. And wonderfully, it's automatically putting it up in my table of contents there. And what I can do is just make sure that to be able to visualize it easily enough, I might want to tick off the roads up the top there, which is going to be that line feature, which will sit on the top of it. And so you'll see now I just have that the roads feature now as a polygon. And you can double check that if you like, but if you go to the map tab and your select tool, you can select that particular polygon feature and you can see how that's being created just there. So if we were to zoom all the way back in, and now what we could actually do is put our roads line feature over the top of that, you should see that the line feature sits right in the middle of what has now been created as our buffer. Okay, and in some places it's not going to be perfect in terms of the width of the, representing the width of the road or even the accuracy of my digitizing as well. But we now have a single polygon feature that we can incorporate directly into what we've got as our infrastructure. So we can merge the two data sets. And we're going to have a look at that in the next video as well.